استحکام ہے پاکستان کا دن جب جاگی کے پہاڑ لرز گئے اور گواہی دی کہ ہاں پاکستان ایک ایتنی قوت ہے ہمیں کوئی شکست نہیں دے سکتا ہم ہیں وطن کا دفاع کرنے والے محافظ وہ دن جب پاکستان کی فضائیں گونج اٹھیں نعرہ تکبیر کی صداوں سے وہ دن جب پاکستان نے بھارت اور اسرائیل کے ناپاک عزائم خاک میں ملا دیے یہ کہانی ہے تب کی جب سات جولائی انیس سو اکاسی کو آپریشن اوپیرا کے ذریعے اسرائیل نے عراق کے جوہری ہتھیار تباہ کر دیے سات جولائی کو اسرائیلی ایئر فورس نے ایس پندرہ اور ایس سولہ تیاروں کے ذریعے اس عراق نے پلے اپنے ایک در تباہ کر دیا اور دوسری طرف بھارت ایک ایٹمی قوت بن گیا اور مسلمان پوری دنیا میں زہر محفوظ ہو گئے انیس سو بہتر میں پاکستان نے اپنے نیوکلئر ری ایکٹر پروگرام کا آغاز کر دیا بین الممالک کی مخالفت اور تمام تر پابندیوں کے باوجود اس قوم کے قابل سائنس دانوں نے پاکستان کو مستحکم اور پہلی اسلامی ایٹمی طاقت بنانے کے لیے کہوٹا لیب میں دن رات کام کیا اپنے دفاع کو مضبوط کرنے کی اس کوشش کے بدلے بھارت سمیت دنیا کے کئی ملکوں نے پاکستان کو دھمکایا اور پاکستان کے ایٹمی پروگرام کو تباہ کرنے کی سازشیں کی لیکن وہ بھول گئے کہ یہ پاکستان ہے عراق نہیں وہ پاکستان جہاں کے ایک ایم ایم عالم نے ایک منٹ سے کم وقت میں بھارت کے پانچ تیارے تباہ کر دیے There are limits to what even the world's last remaining superpower can achieve. And over the last couple of weeks, the United States has received some instruction in those limits. First from the government of India and now today from the government of Pakistan. Neither has been deterred by U.S. warnings of what the consequences would be if either government conducted nuclear tests. They both went ahead and did it anyhow. The government of Pakistan had more to lose. That country is smaller, poorer, and much more dependent on international assistance than India. The United States was apparently prepared to offer some considerable incentives if Pakistan would just say no. Instead, the Pakistanis have apparently conducted five nuclear tests of their own to match the five Indian tests and are reportedly planning even more and claim that they are able to arm some of their missiles with nuclear warheads. There is some doubt in U.S. military circles whether the Pakistanis actually have that capability, but then as late as last night, one senior U.S. diplomat was confidently predicting that Pakistan wouldn't conduct any nuclear tests. And when the Indians conducted theirs a couple of weeks ago, the U.S. government was caught totally off guard. Well, here's more now from Nightline correspondent Chris Bury. The cheering in Pakistan today is another vivid reminder that domestic politics trumps international pressure when it comes to building the bomb. Pakistan! After all, the world witnessed the same kind of national celebration in India little more than two weeks ago. India's detonations then of five nuclear devices have now apparently been matched blast for blast bitter enemy. Our hand was forced by the present Indian leadership's reckless actions. Today, Pakistan's prime minister told his country, we have settled the score with India, we have made five nuclear explosions. We could not have remained complacent about threats to our security. In a separate, even more ominous announcement, Pakistan warned nuclear warheads could soon be placed on missiles capable of reaching India's major cities within minutes of launch. But how seriously should we take the latest developments in the Asian arms race? If Pakistan does what it says it's going to do, deploy n missiles with nuclear warheads, and India follows suit, this will become the most dangerous and unstable military confrontation, certainly since the end of the Cold War and probably since the Cuban Missile Crisis of 1962. Pakistan is some distance away um, from being a proper, fully-fledged nuclear power. Uh, there's a long dis there's, a, there's, a, there's a, a lot of technology that has to be developed from, from exploding a nuclear weapon to actually weaponizing it, uh, to actually creating a device that's stable and can fit perhaps in the warhead of a missile.
In Washington, President Clinton, who had made a midnight plea to Pakistan's prime minister, was clearly disappointed. By failing to exercise restraint and responding to the Indian test, uh, Pakistan lost a truly priceless opportunity to strengthen its own security, to improve its political standing uh, in the eyes of the world. And although Pakistan was not the first to test, two wrongs don't make a right. Like India, Pakistan now faces automatic U.S. sanctions that could cut off hundreds of millions in international aid. But unlike India, Pakistan does not have an economy strong enough to withstand a heavy blow. Today, Pakistan declared a state of emergency to prepare for a possible economic disaster. Yeah! <laughs> 